Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Uh, in an earlier video, I mentioned uh, that I'd read this piece by Andrew Neil this morning, uh, and I said I would do a, a video on it, and here is that video. Andrew Neil, of course, uh, long-term uh, commentator, political commentator. He's interviewed everyone. He recognises truth from BS. He knows when someone's on the make. He knows when people are being economical with the truth and when they're outright lying. He also appreciates a good sense of humour. Um, and this is why on his show he would have such people as Diane Abbott, who's always worth a laugh, uh, and Michael Portillo, who, very strange, ever since he left politics per se, has actually evolved into rather a half-decent human being. Uh, I'm wondering if it's politics that turns them into assholes, but... Maybe it is. Uh, but yeah, so Andrew Neil has written this piece. It's, a sort of, it's kind of a hit piece on the SNP, and in particular, Hamza. And uh, it, Hamza Yousis. And uh, he's he's nailed it on the head, I think. So I'm going to go through it. He, uh, it's a very well-written article, um, and I think uh, it certainly needs a wider uh, exposure. Uh, and so I'm going to do that and make the comments on it as usual. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it as much as, as I do. So uh, here goes. Let's watch this. So, Andrew Neil. Everyone who supports the union should wish the SNP leader Hamza useless a long and secure reign. The longer he's in charge, the less likely the union will be in any way harmed. Uh, and in fact, the longer he's in charge, the weaker and more irrelevant the SNP becomes. Uh, the SNP's fall from grace has been spectacular, both in speed and extent. If anyone had submitted what had happened as a draft script for a political drama just a few months ago, it would have been rejected as implausible and unhinged from reality. And we've been saying this all along. I've mentioned this time and time again. If someone had made a film out of this, it would be a, a, a work of political fiction. No one would believe it. But in a few years' time, someone will make a, f a film about this. Channel 4 film section or something will make a film of this uh, and people will be hooked to it to see everything that's happened because it is spectacular. Uh, but once again, truth has proved stranger and more surprising than fiction. At the start of this year, Nicola Sturgeon was still mistress of all she surveyed, Scotland's most dominant politician by far, even after nine years as First Minister, miles ahead of any political rivals inside or outside the SNP. And I have said, much as I dislike the woman, I have always said she is a consummate politician. She is very, very good as a politician. She plays the game and she plays the game well. And there is no one in the SNP who can hold a candle to her. It's almost as though if you took all the talent from everyone else, all the political nous from everyone else and all the understanding of the intricacies of the political like landscape of Scotland, from everyone else and put it all into one person, they still wouldn't be half as good a politician as Nicola Sturgeon. The problem with Sturgeon is her views were so abhorrent, her hatred of sort of the British constitution, the British state, and I think even English people. I think she was actually down to the point she didn't even like English people. Um, so you can disagree with the state, absolutely fine but to to actually have that and carry that hatred onto people is terrible and i think she was there but you cannot take away her ability to maintain order in the party to maintain discipline uh to 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 get stuff done it's just a shame that the stuff she was doing was so bad um anyway it came as something of a surprise when she announced her resignation on the fe on february the 15th things started to unravel pretty quickly after that a formidable politician who recently could walk on water would now at best be advised to given even the shallowest of puddles a wide berth. First, her husband Murrell, who had until recently been chief executive of the SNP, was arrested and interrogated by police for 11 hours and released without charge but pending further investigation. Uh, and we've covered that time and time again. Um, he, he is certainly not out of the woods. Uh, but before... Uh, but not before police had raided and searched the Sturgeon Murrell family home and garden just outside Glasgow, erecting a line of duty style tent as part of the operation, which gave a new slant to the SNP's claim to be a big tent party. Well, it's only a little tent, I suppose. Uh, then, this week, the SNP party treasurer Colin Beattie was arrested, interrogated and also released without charge as part of the major police investigation 
into the finances. Finances now, which are in the hands of, and totally the responsibility of, Hamza Yousaf, a man who has failed at everything. So we don't expect these accounts to be in any way, shape or form good. They will be appalling. And I bet they're getting worse by day by day while he's in control of them because he doesn't know what he's doing. He really hasn't got a clue. Um, and it is, it's a slow crash and burn. I can't wait for it to happen. It's, you just got to keep watching this. It's like a soap opera. This will be this will be a ten part series. Honestly, this will be a ten part series, and people will be hooked every Thursday night, eight o'clock. You know, we can call it the Marils or something like that. It will be fantastic. Uh, Marrell and Beatty were two of the three official keepers of the party's money, and we know who the third is. Uh, the third was Sturgeon, which is why Scotland is awash with rumours that she too will be arrested and interrogated. The fact it hasn't happened yet indicates that there's a conspiracy it gives people time to go and tell each other what they said to the police what they must say when they're arrested if the police were doing their job properly all three of them would have been arrested at once put under caution and questioned in separate rooms and not released until the answers had been got at there was no way they could sit there uh, and confer with one another you'd be playing the prisoner's dilemma now all three of them have got their story straight between them and Nicola Sturgeon will get away with this scot-free. It is a terrible indictment on the police and questions need to be asked on the running of this investigation. Uh, I think the, uh, the Chief Constable of Scotland must consider his position and resign. Uh, now, none of these, of course, have been accused of any wrongdoing, although we all suspect and believe that they have. Police Scotland's inquiry centres on the 667,000 the party raised from supporters between 2017 and 2020 on the understanding that the money would be ring-fenced for a second independence referendum campaign. But the party's published accounts show it to be seri seriously short of cash because they've spent it. What happened to the DOSH was unclear, hence the police inquiry. Well, you know, when you're buying motorhomes and jewellery and you're paying people off uh, and then suddenly other senior members have to come along and offer lots of money as a cash flow loan and things like that. You have to wonder where the money has gone. Uh, the matter became even murkier when it was revealed that Murrell had mysteriously loaned the party 107000 in June 2021 to help with the cash flow problem. Unknown to most senior MPs, including Surgeon successor Hamza Yousaf, he claims. The party's auditors resigned last October. Unsurprisingly, it's proving something of a struggle to appoint new ones. Meanwhile, Murrell and Beattie have also resigned from their posts. Murrell has, Beattie hasn't. They keep putting this same old line out that Beattie has resigned from his post. He's never said he's resigned. He keeps using the term stepping back while the police investigation is ongoing. Meaning as soon as the police stop lo looking, he will step forward once again. And there she is. What a sour old face that is. That is a woman who knows she is going to be questioned and she does not have the answers. And I'm just looking at that little old lady's puckered mouth. That is a mouth that is prematurely old. That's the mouth of an 80 year old woman sitting there waiting for a pension on a Tuesday morning. Got the little blue tartan bag on wheels that they have. Honestly, she's younger than me. She looks a lot older. That face is collapsing. But I suppose that's the stress of it all, isn't it? Uh, when it comes to the SNP's finances these days, it never rains, but it pours. The party needs to produce audited accounts by the end of May or the flow of taxpayers' money all opposition parties at Westminster enjoy to help their operations will cease next month. There is no way the SNP can produce audited financial accounts in the next few weeks, so that's another $1.2 million a year at risk. Uh, and I've mentioned this before, it's called the short money, uh, and it's, I don't agree with it. I don't think anyone agrees that you, the taxpayer, me, the taxpayer, should be forced to pay taxes to support political parties with whom we do not agree. Some of these parties um, have policies that I find downright offensive and they, they should not take my tax money and support them. There should be uh, an option that, that, you know, party, fundamentally, political parties should be self-funding. If they cannot gender enough money to run, then that is a reflection on their policies and they should not be allowed to run. Uh, they should not receive any public money whatsoever. And in fact, for their offices at Westminster, they should be charged rather than be given money. If you want to rent an office in Westminster Palace as part of your operation, running your things at Parliament, you pay for it. 
let's hire, let's rent those offices out. And if you don't want to pay, fine, you go and hire somewhere else in London. You you run your office, you know, up in Hounslow or Shoreditch or God forbid south of the river. I can say that because I used to live in Woolwich. So hey, uh, used to go drinking in Catford. Leave it at. The SNP says it will shortly appoint a new treasurer uh, rather than have one voted in, which is traditionally what happens, but they haven't got time for that. Uh, but just who would be foolish enough to accept this poison chalice is as yet unknown. The SNP says it will shortly anoint a new treasurer, but just who would be foolish enough to accept this poison chalice as, is as yet unknown. Normally it's voted in, but they don't have time for that, so they have to actually anoint one. Um, but it's now widely regarded as one of the worst, uh, least coveted jobs, akin to be made chief rabbi of the hamas controlled Gaza Strip. Uh, then there's the camper van. Yes, the camper van, described as a luxury motorhome and reputedly costing more than £100,000. That might explain where some of the money went. Indeed, oh, they, this lie, oh, it was during COVID and we needed some way of having people travelling around the country. Um, why? Is the transport system in Scotland so bad that you can't rely on trains and buses? We'll have to ask the transport secretary. Who was the transport? Oh, it was Hamza Yousaf, wasn't it? So no wonder they had to buy this very, very expensive camper van uh, rather than renting a car, you know, uh, because he got that wrong as well. Uh, and it was supposedly bought to be a battle bus during the 2021 elections for the Scottish Parliament, though it was never used as such. And it's been sitting outside the Dunfermline home of Sturgeon's 92-year-old mother-in-law since 2021. The police have now impounded it. More on that story in a minute, because there's something very dodgy about Police Scotland and the impounding of that uh, that vehicle. So uh, I've got a fill, I've got a video on that uh, be coming out shortly as well. So keep them peeled on that. Uh, but just when you thought the strange story could not get any more bizarre, it tipped into the farcical. For Yousaf, the new First Minister, it's been worse than farcical. It's been a disaster. Instead of the grace period usually accorded to political leaders when they first accede to power, he's had to endure the honeymoon from hell. Everything that could possibly have gone wrong for Hamza Yousaf has gone wrong. I mean, I don't just mean since he's become leader. I mean generally his whole life. But since he's become leader, it's got worse. Um, he's also proved to be his own worst enemy, wading into the controversy now swirling around the SNP with hobnail boots, giving gormless answers when he had no need to say anything. A YouGov poll published yesterday found that 39% of Scottish voters regard him as incompetent. I've done the video on that. Please see uh, my, my previous video on this subject. I'm not going to go through the details. Uh, but even worse than these dreadful polling figures is the fact that he's become a figure of derision, an image it is hard to shake off for any politician. Even when it takes, uh, when it takes root in the public imagination, just ask John Major and Ed Miliband. Ed Miliband had that picture taken during the election uh, and it said that the, this one photograph lost the election for Labour and it was him trying to eat a bacon sandwich uh, and it was like a droopy bacon sandwich it was like that and he's like uh, uh. and that picture was taken and they, they, they reckon that one picture was what lost the election for Labour because it just sat there impinged in the public mind and they could never eradicate it although one has to ask why a good Jewish boy like Miliband was eating bacon sandwiches in the first place but that's not me to take judge I have known many Jewish people and quite a few of whom have sort of gone oh yeah no I don't eat pork I don't eat this I don't eat that but bacon meh you know and they, they do eat bacon so I, I understand because it's bacon you know um, and as for John Major it was John uh, oh god what was it spitting image destroyed John Major by having him, they painted him grey, he was just this grey character in Spitting Image, and he used to have him sitting there over the table with Norma, uh, and you could see the, uh, the the shirt was tucked into the underpants, and they'd be going, you know, these peas are nice, dear. Oh, would you like more peas, John? Yes, I'd like more peas, Norma, they're nice. And they just completely obliterated him as the world's greatest, most boring man. And nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. But anyway, political opponents have taken him to dubbing him Comical Alley after Saddam's hapless spokesman, who claimed there was no inma invading American troops in Baghdad in 2003, even though, as he was giving the press conference, there's no, there's no, there's no tanks here, there's no there. And you can see the tanks rolling in, the American tanks rolling in behind him. Uh, the man was an idiot. Um, one Scottish commentator has even compared him to a fiercely vibrating spin dryer about to topple over. And he's pro-SNP. Uh, another likened him to a toddler determined to force a fork into an electric socket. 
All political careers end in failure, opined a third. Yusuf has managed to begin his there. <laughs> I like that line. Uh, and then here's a picture, of course, of the only person who can save the SNP. Although, I will say, if she was decide to leave the SNP, cross the floor and join, I'm going to say, any other party, they would welcome the, her with open arms. I think especially the Tories. I think at heart she is very conservative. I don't think she would necessarily agree with the, the conservative values of the Conservative Party, but I think she's very socially conservative. Um, I think that's where she would find a natural home in terms of policy would be the Conservative Party. So it'd be her, you know, her mission. If and when the SNP do break up and they cease to be, she would continue a political career and she'd have a choice of parties. I think anyone would be uh, very, very happy to have her. Um, but anyway, a uh, fourth said that on the scale of disasters, Yousaf was somewhere between the Hindenburg and Liz Truss. Now, I'm wondering, does he mean the Hindenburg and Liz Truss? Or does he mean the Hindenburg and Liz Truss? Which, which is the worst one? Um, he is already widely referred to as Hamza Useless. Everyone calls him that. We've been calling him that from day one. Uh, the political toll on the SNP has been enormous. The YouGov poll gives it 38% of the vote way down from its heyday and only eight points ahead of Labour. And of course, I mentioned this earlier as well. There's only a four point uh, drift between um, the SNP and Labour. But of course, you're going to have many more perhaps leaving the SNP and going to other parties, which will still benefit Labour because everyone who leaves the SNP means that the, the distance to them from Labour reduces. Uh, and for everyone who leaves the SNP and goes to Labour, it's it's like a real six pointer for them, uh, and it doesn't it doesn't take much now. Uh, and of course, once once uh, Sturgeon is arrested and, the, and fa more facts come out, and a lot more facts, a lot more facts are going to come out. Uh, and I'm hoping I have one piece of it. I keep saying this, I keep teasing this. I have one piece of information which I cannot tell because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I need it to come out into the open. But as soon as it comes into the open, it's going to be big. Anyway, getting back. Um, Labour is hoping to take at least 15 seats at the general election, which will greatly help Sir Keir Starmer's bid for 10 Downing Street. It's still a far cry from the 40-odd seats Labour used to win in Scotland, but it's better than the one Scottish seat it currently holds. Labour would win more than 15 if it had a leader who caught the Scottish imagination. And I'm rather afraid Anna Soir is not the leader in Scotland that uh, Labour need. And I think Keir Starmer is not the leader at Westminster that Labour lead. Uh, Keir Starmer is tainted. He's the man that didn't, for example, prosecute Savile. Uh, he's a man with a bit of a dodgy history on a lot of things. He's a man who cannot even define what a woman is. Um, so there's the main problem for Labour. But on the other hand, who else have you got? Because you, you, you've got a, got a lot of gobby people in Labour, particularly uh, redheads who get pregnant when they're 14 and leave school unable to read and write um, and who have no sort of feeling with the people. She can't be leader. God help us, no. But who else is there? Labour have got a complete lack of anyone talented and knowledgeable enough to be leader. Because Sakia, terribly as he is, I can't think of anyone better. It's a very sad state of affairs. And the worst of it is, when you have a Tory government and no opposition, the madness of the Tories will always come out. It's what ultimately dest destroyed the Tories uh, in the 90s. Uh, it's because they'd had power from 79 all the way through. No one could challenge them. It was only the rise of Blair where they actually had a credible opposition. I know John Smith was there, but John Smith died far too quickly, far too young. Um, he was a good leader. He could have given a a good run for the money, but unfortunately, uh, circumstance and all that. Um, but Blair was a credible leader. He was a good leader, terrible man, war criminal, horrible man. But he was a good leader. But Scott, uh, but but Labour don't have a good leader, leader, which is why the Tories are getting away with absolute awful things. It's it's just we, why have we got such a dearth of talent in any political party at the moment? There is no one, no one with the ability to lead a party and do anything well. They're all running scared for some reason. Uh, anyway, for all the SNP's travails, it is not in meltdown. Seriously wounded, yes. Past the height of its power, certainly. Destined for further decline, probably. 
but it's still likely to remain the largest Scottish party in Holyrood and Westminster for the foreseeable future. I don't think it'll be the largest party in Westminster. It certainly isn't. Not by a long chalk. Um, it became almost too dominant for its own good and succumbed to the hubris and arrogance which affects all one-party states. See what I've just said about the Tories through the 80s and 90s. Uh, it thought it could do no wrong when in reality it could do little right. It governed from a Holyrood bubble in which it heard only voices urging it to go even further, insulated from criticism by a cowed media and supported by a civic Scotland, from pressure groups to charities to universities, which, bought, which it bought off or intimidated into silence. And that is entirely what's happened. Nobody in Scottish media would ever gainsay or criticise Sturgeon. They were scared to do so. If they did anything out of line, she cut their access. Now... All the papers are just tackling the SNP because none of them are scared anymore. The fear has gone. They're not something to be feared. The SNP are now something that to be ridiculed and shown up for what they are. They're little generals, aren't they? They're little armchair generals who sit there and make big plans, but they don't have the ability to fulfil them. Uh, anyway... Sturgeon was encouraged to proceed by the Greens, Labour, the Lib Dems and all those well-financed voices who've elevated identity politics above all else. Thus, she did reach a crucial milestone in her demise. The glory days are over for the SNP, its dream of independence further away than it has been for a generation. This is true. I mean, if you had a, a, a vote tomorrow, it would most certainly lose by a big margin. Uh, when Yousaf laid out his stall in a speech last week, nobody took much notice of it because it was also the day Beatty was arrested. But he did not mention independence, which is at least realistic because there is no chance of a second referendum. And if there was, the SNP would lose for a second time. And if you doubt that, ask yourself this. Would Sturgeon have resigned if she thought independence was within her grasp? No. And so with independence off the agenda, the SNP will be thrown back on its record, which is a dismal prospect. Uh, their, their record is the worst record of any political party. Uh, under the SNP, Scotland has lost its ability to build even the simplest of ferries, fail to narrow the educational attainment gap between poor and affluent students, prioritise foreign students over homegrown ones at its ancient universities, snuffed out economic growth, introduced a high tax regime which will disencourage enterprise and presided over deteriorating health service and by far the worst drug related death record in Europe. Older re readers will understand why I say they've done a Gerald Ratner to the Scottish brand. Uh, all this will now come to the fore and since Yousaf has been complicit in many of these failures he will not be best suited to dealing with them. He is so currently tied up with the old regime that has done all this he can never extricate himself from it. He is joined at the hip with these people. He is in the eye of the public the reason why the country is so bad. Him. Now, the people who have actually done it have gone, but they've left him, Continuity Humza. He is the beating boy for these people, and he deserves all he gets. Uh, his main rival, Kate, Form, uh, Kate Forbes, whom he only beat narrowly for the leadership, is already out on manoeuvres, touting a less socialist, more inclusive approach. It's New Labour with a Highland lilt. Those who believe in the union, however, might like to wish Yousaf a long and secure reign in Butte House. After all, if a politician as accomplished as Sturgeon could not break up the union. There's no way he will succeed where she fails because he fails at everything. That is an article worth the reading. I'll put the link down to it, but you've heard it here, but it is stunningly good. I love Andrew Neil. Andrew Neil has nailed this man to the mast. Hamza Yousaf is a serial failure. He cannot go on, uh, but we really need him to because the, more, the longer he stays, the worse it gets for the SNP. Anyway, I shall round off and come up. This is an exceedingly long video. I do think Andrew Neil has just got a wonderful way of describing things. I read that, I was laughing at part of that, uh, even as I was reading it for the second time and I was still laughing. Uh, I'm just imagining Hamza Yousaf sitting there by a wall with a fork trying to shove it, shove it into a power socket because that's the, li the limit of the man, that's his level. That's as much as he's ever hoping to achieve. Electrocuting himself would be an easy way out, I think. Because otherwise he's got the death of a thousand cuts sitting there every day, waking up and going, what fresh hell have I got now? Before opening the papers, closing them again and putting his head in his hands. Because that's where he's at. That is all he's got. 
and it isn't going to get any easier as more and more stuff comes out it's going to get harder and harder and the SNP are just sinking deeper and deeper into the mire of filth and corruption and just wait till it all comes out I shall stop now thank you very much if you have made it to the end of this video you are martyrs and I thank you very much so uh, yes if you have done that and you haven't subscribed just subscribe because you've sat through the worst of it thanks very much anyway until next time stay safe stay well dear god keep watching this farce and let's go